Glad you could join us. Yeah, pretty good, Mel. Mel? Yes, sir. May, may in view of uh, Mark's uh, relative in departure, can I jump in and just say a very great thank you to him and to you for the sterling and most impressive work you've done over the last 12 months, at least, in keeping these sessions, in producing these sessions and making them available. It's uh, absolutely staggering quite what you've been up to. Okay, so thank, you, thank you both very, very much indeed, and everybody else that's in, been involved in whatever way they, they have. Um, well, we, we've, we've been going on these since January 2019. Yeah. And going yeah. back, um, Mark actually, because he's got the technical genius, uh, actually started, we didn't actually start recording the sessions until we got hot and heavy into it until May 2020 last year. But all the sessions from May 2020 yeah. are available on the OC College all website. On, all on the website, yes, anyway. indeed. Yes. And whilst, whilst, if I may, can I say a, a thank you to Bob Elling for having produced some amazing hoedowns. Um, one anomaly I've noticed very recently that um, about time was my morphed into Are You Ready? It seems <laughs> the same piece of music with the addition of uh, young male on the, the vocal. They're different mixes. They're different mixes. Right. Okay. No, I, I, I played Are You Ready and it sounded awfully familiar. <laughs> no, very, not awfully, wonderfully familiar. Um, no, it, it, the, uh, it was about time that <laughs> caught me first time around. And who's doing that xylophone, a regular thing that crops up every so often? It's, yeah, wondrous. Um, okay, and can I say a hello, a hello and thank you to young Yolanda, who is a breath of ex extreme youth and glorious <laughs> enthusiasm and smile. You've, you've illuminated the place for uh, a, a long time and that's absolutely lovely. Thank you very much. <laughs> Um, and that's about it. The only other question is, anybody seen Ed Foot recently? Um, he used to be crop up from time to time amongst this this lot, and I haven't haven't seen him for a little while. Ed's, Ed's done a few sessions with us. I think he's done four yeah. sessions with us. And um, right now he he's back into it, but I am hoping to get Ed back in the new year as well to do yes. a couple of things. I'm, I see Mike there, and I'm hoping to get Mike back to do a couple more sessions and do a follow up on his activator and see where we can press ahead with that. Right, but I yeah. haven't I haven't asked him yet, so he doesn't know anything about it. So we'll just pretend I didn't say that. Yeah. No, I'm, I'm not very I'm subtle, am I, Mike? <laughs> <laughs> I'm aware that um, Ed, uh, along with quite a number of the rest of us, is now no longer quite as young as he used to be, and various people seem to be disappearing off. off off the uh, face of the earth, unfortunately, and uh, there's some some information I'd like to ask him about that he is old enough to know, uh, and I just hope he hasn't hasn't disappeared yet. Okay, I think that's probably more than more than enough for me. But thank you, thank you, and thank you all for being yeah. part of a one. If you're, a, if a you're trying to get community. a hold of Ed, uh, Ed, Ed can always be reached by email. He answers all, yes, all I, his emails. I, I do have an email for him, so okay. I'll, I will go, go that way. But meantime, oh. it's always been lovely to see various people that we've actually met over the years and a lot of other ones that we haven't yet. Hannah and Lars and I say Guido and uh, Edelcrowd, we've met. We've had the pleasure of their company recently. Anyway, enough from me. Um, carry on and thank you. Okay, thank you, man. Just one thing from me um, for Simon and Susie. Um, Ed is still around. He has been in the advanced color lab meeting just a couple of minutes or hour or two hours ago. So he's still around. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome. This is our last session of the year. And I thought I would just say Rather than do a formal presentation, we have covered an awful lot of material on an awful lot of topics. Um, one of the most, uh, some very, very positive comments come in, some very good comments, and also some open, constructive critique and criticism uh, with encouragement, enthusiasm for new callers or even from experienced callers or 
a very experienced caller saying, you know, I never looked at it that way. I want to write that down and steal, or sorry, uh, researching newer callers choreography into their repertoires. And this is what it's all about is there's nobody here that is a massive expert that they are such a great caller that they are so much better than any other caller, whether they've been calling for 50 years or they've been calling for five minutes. That experience is something that needs to be shared. But in the grand scheme of things, we're here for an activity and that we are the delivery mechanism of a product. And that's all we are. And because we're the delivery mechanism of product, we're all peers and everybody's voice has merit. And only through that, the experienced callers, like we get guys like Mike, we get guys like Bob, we get guys like Jeff and Mickey in there that have got so many and many more, so many years experience that they know that that works, that doesn't, they can share that. But by the same token, there's somebody like Yolanda or somebody like uh, Masako there who will come up with a piece of choreography and ask a question that makes people like me, that makes people like uh, Mike Sikorsky or Mickey reflect on, wow, I never saw that that way, or that's cool, I'm gonna steal, uh, I'm going to research that into my repertoire. So I encourage you to share your ideas, to ask questions, because in the grand scheme of things, we are all peers in this activity. All we are is just peers with a little bit more longevity. And if you think of peers as in peers for a boat ramp, those old peers, every now and then you got to replace the ropes and refresh the moorings for them to stay fresh as well. And that's what this is for. But they're the basis on what people building new peers are going to look at because they work, they're functional, and they can develop and the new idea will refresh that. And that's how that's my approach to square dance calling to square dance mentoring to square dance coaching. Everybody has a voice. And you're all your voices are very, very welcome, even when there's conflicting opinions. And that's one of the big things that I really like uh, with sessions like this. It's one of the reasons why I signed on with uh, Barry Watson on BTM, because there's no hesitation to say, uh, Mike Sikorsky uses the activator system and he, he calls the chicken plucker right and left through, dive through, pass through. And Bob Elling uses a different system, which is a combination of mental image and his version, but his chicken plucker, he likes to just do uh, dive through, pass through without the right and left through because it keeps the dancers in sequence and it makes it easier for him. We'll present both aspects of that and let you choose what works functionally for you. And that's what this whole thing is about. There is no right. We presented numerous resolution techniques. There is no right or wrong resolution technique. The best resolution technique is the one that works for you individually that you understand that you can develop and make your own and that you can build your programs from and once you have that i encourage you to share we provide this service free because i believe in it and the only price that i've ever asked uh, in coaching is if you're ever in the position to help somebody else out do it i do want to make a plug for there's a number of caller schools that are running there's a number of caller schools coming up now that we're opening up. If you're in the state, there is the GSI caller school is running at the 70th, uh, 70th or 71st convention that's coming up. Uh, Mike, are you running a caller school again this year? I was changing rooms here, so I, I was muted. Uh, yes, we plan to run uh, last part of August again. We're going to run the one in Gloversville, New York. Uh, that's definitely on the schedule. And the other one that will be if the Indio Festival happens again, which has been dark two years now, uh, it's, back, it's back on schedule. If it happens again, we'll do that one in Indio, California before the big festival. So we got those two for sure. Uh, make sure you send me the flyers for those so we can get them out if you can as well. Uh, will do. Thank you. Now, um, with that, one of the things on caller schools that I've really strongly encouraged, I got a really, really flattering email the other day, which essentially said, 
what I like about your sessions compared to color schools is you'll take one part of a topic, we'll spend an hour and then two hours discussing it. You don't get that in color school. You're fed with a fire hose and you have to take that away and, and learn it over the year. That is the wrong visual of what a color school is doing for you. What caller schools do, I strongly encourage if there's one in your area, if you're an experienced caller and it's for newbies or if you're for newbies and it's something that is welcome for new and experienced callers, if you have the ability to go to a caller school, go. You will come back refreshed. You will come back with a new insight. You'll come back with networking connections that are probably the biggest benefit of caller schools. And you'll have those personal connections with the instructors that are delivering this material I, I've done caller schools with Ken, with, with uh, Bill Harrison, with um, Tony Oxendine, with uh, you know, numerous others. They freely give the email. They freely give a contact. And if I send something, I know if I send Mike a question on his activator system, or I send Bob a question on, on music production or, or anything like that, Jeff and I are in contact, you know, a fair, fair bit looking at choreography, that I'm going to get a response. And it also builds those networks amongst new callers. So if you ever get a chance to go to a caller school, go. I guarantee you that if you are a 50 year caller and you call from basic to A2 and there's a new, new caller school coming up for, for new and experienced callers or new and, and newer callers, if you go to that, I guarantee you'll come back refreshed and you'll come back having learned something because there's nothing better than going back and looking at something old with a new pair of eyes or looking at something new with an old pair of eyes. So I encourage that. This is not a caller school. We're just going into the depth. This is what it was asked for to look in what you should be doing individually when you come from a caller school, you get all this material. We're just taking, breaking it down step by step. So I, I encourage that. So now that I've given my 10 minutes of blatant product placement, what we're doing and everything else. I want to wish everybody a fantastic Christmas holiday, a fantastic happy holidays, a fantastic new year and all that. This session is about questions that you may have, things that you want to look at, ask the experts. There are a lot of experts here. I am not one of them. I never profess to be an expert. Um, and if you want to look at a piece of choreography, you want to do something or talk about things that are developing, by all means, this is the forum for it. So let's throw the floor open. I've got a few things that I want to talk about later, but we'll throw that in. Mickey, you got a star by your name. That's just for Christmas because it's a Christmas. Oh. Oh. <laughs> I, th I thought maybe you changed your buttons. No, no, it's just, just Christmas. <laughs> Does anybody have anything they want to look at before we get into various topics or discussion points. I, di I, did, I did actually put down some discussion points for today. I haven't introduced them yet, just in case we didn't have anything to talk about, but it is there. Oh, don't be sad, Edeltraub. We're, we're, you know, we're only, we'll be back in the new year. <laughs> Masami and Masako, how are things going in Japan? I think she's muted. We've been yeah. dancing uh, for about three months and then having a lot of fun, but uh, um, still wearing a mask and no more face shield, though. Well, that, that, that's, that's a step in the right direction, no pun intended. How, di how did your um, presentation, I, I hear you're, you're starting to get some more um, more tips to call. Have you so sorted all that out now? Um, oh yes. Um, last uh, I forgot. Last winter, I was asked to start learning how to call plus level dances, and then uh, it's been a nightmare, but a fun, enjoyable nightmare. I, I can only encourage you to say, keep your foundation strong because it's easy to build on something that's solid underneath it. Uh, you, you, you've got, definitely got the head for the choreography because I've seen your choreography and, and keep plugging at it. I'm very happy for you. 
How about you, Masami? Things are going well in your area? All right. Uh, when we really start the dancing um, from uh, October, uh, we dance without no seat, without shoes. I'm glad people are getting back at it. It's one of the reasons why these sessions are getting smaller and that's not necessarily a bad thing because people are getting back at the dancing. Yeah. So, has anybody got a topic they want to throw out or do you want me to just throw topics out for discussion? Yes, Bob. You need to unmute, Bob. Wanted to address that checker issue. It was commented that way back when I started, we used checkers. Let me say everybody else used checkers. I was frustrated with checkers. I had no problem. I was just impatient. I couldn't move them all fast enough. And uh, so I learned J. King's annotation for diagramming a square, and I would do that. But I also, what got to me, and I wish colors would do it, it was when I would write out a sequence, I would dance it to music on the floor in my living room by myself from four positions. I'd play the same sequence. If it was head square through, I would dance it as the head boy. I would dance it as the head girl. I would dance it as the side boy and the side girl. You would be surprised how different some of those could be. You know, and you don't want to get overflow. Have you ever been at a dance where somebody fell on the floor? And I always wonder how many times if it wasn't the caller who screwed him into the ground. You know, an example would be a guy submitted to, I, I did note services for our callers association. And one guy submitted a thing, head square through four, touch a quarter, scoot back, cast off, three quarter, boy run, bend the line, and a partner trade to phase out, and a partner hinge. And if you trace that boy's path, it's just, it's a corkscrew. And I have been on a dance floor where I got dizzy and unsettled. And a lot of that happens. And if you would dance it from the perspective of the four different people that are involved, you would know that right away. I found that out right away. And then you also learn how to establish body flow. Checkers do not teach you good flow. They just teach you where you go and how you do it but they don't establish the overall feeling of body flow. And I was so happy about that, and I shared it with a good friend, another caller of mine, that I, I that, that's how I did it. And he looked me in the eye and he said, that's exactly how I do it. That was Marshall Flippo, known as one of the smoothest callers in the country. You know, if we could only dance our own material from all four perspectives, you could do it. I, I will still do that in a call uh, occasionally. I don't do it a lot now because I've only done it a thousand times already. So I got a sense of how it's going to go. And, you know, checkers are overrated to me. That's my thing. Uh, what Tamination does is it does checkers faster. <laughs> That's all it does for me. It does it faster. And yeah, I like Vic Cedar's program. And I've got that and I use it and I highly recommend it. But I'm interested in the ending positions because I've studied the body flow. And But a newer caller needs to know the body flow also. And the newer caller needs to know the timing also. Checkers do not teach body flow. Checkers do not teach timing. Checkers are a fun puzzle thing, but no sooner do you start using checkers than you start using checker shortcuts. 
That's my thing. I, I watched it. I still call don't it use Tiger Shortcut. Yeah. Well, you might not. You're the exception. Yeah, I but saw. I, th- I, I I agree with you wholeheartedly that that um, checkers are like oh, they are a learning tool. They're a good tool to learn the movement mechanics. But as Bob says, they don't teach you timing. They don't teach you body flow because they are an inanimate object, and so is Taminations. That said, there is. Uh, I I was in a meeting with uh, Reinhold Rodick the other day on Colorama, and he is developing. A new function, well, a couple of new functions. One is the ability to type in choreography rather than click buttons. But one of the things that's coming up is he's got an analytical program that is looking specifically at body flow. And what it does is the, although it won't hit all of the mechanics, but if you do something like um, star through zoom, you'll get a little red box up in your corner of of the screen. And that says "Ah, there's a problem with that. You hover over the box and say, okay, this may be a body flow issue due to crowding. It may be a body flow issue due to a sudden change in direction. If you do um, swing through, ends run, bend the line, it'll flag red. Uh, it'll flag green with okay in it if the body flow is good. It'll flag black if there's, you know, this will work from this position, but it may not always work. So this is a program that's in development and hopefully it'll be out in the next year. It's not something to say, here's, here's the be all end all of body flow. But if the color changes, it says, you know, you may want to look at that body flow and it's just, it's the next step in evolution that's coming up. That should be out in the, it's in the beta version of Colorama right now. That's just being tested. We were looking at it uh, last week, but it's something to look forward to. And if you're curious or you're interested in working with Reinhold to develop that, send him an email. He, he's most happy to have input on any of these development programs. But again, it is a tool. And as Bob said, nothing will replace you getting up on the floor and dancing your material. Nothing will replace that because you have to. And when you do it, do the hand movements as well, because that'll tell oh, yes. you a lot. Square dancing is all about the hands. You know, people will tell you a call is good or bad, and they could be wrong because they don't understand what the hands did. The The example is walk and dodge partner trade. A partner trade ends with the girl reaching back with her left hand to take the boy's hand. That gives her a left hand body flow potential. You know, and you, there, there are and, a lot of movements like that. Um, what what is really good um i was actually just looking at some of um the caller lab resource material in fact i'll put some of that i'll put one of those up on the screen right now um body flow where are you there think how we're no. talking about body flow <laughs> this this was going to be one of my sessions i was going to get hopefully somebody that is much better at it than i am but uh, i'll just share my screen here I can. Okay, so this is, Tim Mariner wrote this, and it was part of an exercise. You should be able to see that on your screens? Okay. And he just said, you know, put your checkers through or put this into your choreography and see what constitutes body flow. And there's a whole bunch of sequence and or, as Bob says, and try dancing it and just see what's going if you dance it from all these things. Now, there's things like left touch a quarter, walk and dodge, partner trade as opposed to touch a quarter, walk and dodge, partner trade. You know, he put out this do not call combination list. And for the most part, it's a really, really good list. And, you know, this is one of the things that we talk about in here. You know, can I call following a square through, touch a quarter, scoot back, or following a square through, is it proper to call left square through? Well, the definition says yes. Uh, The computer program, Taminations will do that with absolutely no problem. Your checkers will do that. They don't object because they're not dancers. But the answer is no, it's not okay because square through ends with a right hand, free, and you've just used your left hand and you want to do a left square through following that. But there's a whole bunch of things on this list and these are on his do not call list. Star through veer left, we've talked about that one. Flutter wheel to a Dixie style. Centers in, bend the line, or ends run, bend the line. There's one on here that I looked at right and left through veer left. 
Now that's on the do not call list as bad body flow. Anybody want to comment on that? It's an issue of timing. Right. Anybody else? Callers would argue that call right and left through and then like heads right and left through and then lead left. I personally don't call it. I think that's terrible choreography. Uh, I've heard people say, uh, for instance, in Contra, they do a right and left through to a left hand star, which would be more akin to a right and left through and veer right. But try and call that and, and you'll find out how rough that actually is because that's not what the dancers expect. I still maintain that the way we call and what the dancers expect, it's body flow is really about 60% where you lead their mind. Uh, what, and the, that, that's an important factor in, in, in what we're talking about is how you build your choreography together. Uh, I know Bob has commented um, in a different way on the same thing there, but uh, he, and I, I, I've known Bob for a long time and, he, and he's got a reputation for putting mm -hmm. things together very smoothly and it's very nice and it's a good dance experience. And so it's the whole construction of the whole thing um, that, makes, that makes the difference. So I, I have no problem with right and left through and veer left simply because it is expected. And I, I'll get to you in just a second, Guido. I just wanted to add on to that. Uh, I use right and left through veer left, and I agree wholeheartedly. A lot of it has to do with the delivery timing. Uh, if you do it, a right and left through veer left, that's called while they're just entering the top. So they're, they're at this point that they're coming around that you're going to give the veer left so that they actually blend that into the tail end of the courtesy turn on the right and left through. Most of these body flow issues you're going to find are not a matter of hand, not a matter of kinesthetics. They're a matter of delivery timing or a matter of crowding. Star through and zoom. Is that bad body flow? Well, if I'm going to end up in a double pass through, absolutely. But if I, what if I do a star through and I end up in a completed double pass through? Is that bad body flow still? Because it's a forward and away action. Well, Technically, no. And that adds that gray area of, do I want to use it? Because that might build that habit of star through and zoom. And those are, you know, we do star through and cloverleaf. We do star through and zoom. We do all sorts of things from a completed double pass through. But where the issue is, is, is not just a right hand to right hand or a sudden jerk change of, of direction. There's a whole bunch of other considerations that are included. And as both Mike and Bob very eloquently said, timing, dancer expectation, dancer anticipation have a lot to do with this. And one of the things that we've been talking about all year or the last two years is there are choreography and choreographic flow is important, but there's things that are more important. -er, and that is your ability to deliver what you want to deliver what the dancers want and to deliver what the dancers expect, but they don't even know they're expecting it. And I had this discussion with a caller the other day, Howard Coburn um, called a dance here a few years back. And I was standing talking to a new caller and I wasn't even aware I was doing it, but I was saying the next two calls that he was going to call. Never, I, I'd never heard him call before. And the reason was he was setting it up. There was really nothing else that could go there. He could have called what he had, was going to call and said, Wapiti Splash Wing Dig. The dancers would have done it anyway because their flow was leading them to a smooth transition where they could have done really nothing else without feeling uncomfortable. And that's a goal you want to try to achieve. We've got the language to help us. We've got the delivery. We've got the timing. And they are very important things. So I agree wholeheartedly with both of you. I like right and left through your left. Guido, you had your hand up. Yeah, you have this right and left through via right. I exposed my dancers to that. And um, it was the highlighted thing. Um, and the dancer said it's OK. They just need to hear the via rights early enough, enough. Yeah. yeah. To, to dance it. But they don't 
they said, well, it's not bad for them. They, they just needed to hear soon enough so they can position themselves. Uh, so, well, right and left through your right is not a combination I call five times each club night, but I yeah. call it occasionally. And um, as I say, as I always say, if your dancers can dance it, you don't call it. And if you don't call it, uh, you cannot expect your dancers to be able to dance it. Um, it's just something. Well, dancers need to be trained the variety. Um, they must be exposed to the variety. And if they are, there will be a lot of better dancers than if they, if, if you just always call the same thing. Yeah, I I have a thing that I do with that. I use, I'm like Guido, you know, and I agree 100%. I use right and left through veer right. But I also, when I need a little comedy added to my choreography, I do right and left through and veer. And then I'll say right or left. But they will pause, you know, and they'll laugh. And that's good once every six months or so, but uh, it's fun, but it makes dancers aware that they have a choice. I you watched know, a it, video the other day of, of a caller. It was at one of the big dances. He would call it something like uh, head square through four, swing through. That's bad. Now, no, no, he was doing this intentionally in his singing call. And I thought the first time I heard that, I said, "Oh, it was poor dancers." No. The fourth time he called it, the dancers were all laughing. It was hilarious, and they didn't, you know. Sometimes he called "swing through," and then then at the end he said, "square through, swing." Well, swinger. And the dancers <laughs> had a good time. That is the difference. Yeah. And it was a it was a beautiful performance. That is terrible choreography as far as the delivery timing goes. But it was done with humor as a gimmick, and that's very much along the line of what you're saying, Bob. That's not something you would ever do as a regular thing, but as a showmanship gimmick to have fun with the dancers, you can get away with doing something like that once or twice. Yeah. So be very cautious. Um, there's a few of these. Touch a quarter, walk and dodge, wheel around. It's horrible. Horrible. Now, what would make that better? What, touch a quarter, walk and, walk and dodge, take a nap, now wheel around. Or it's a reverse wheel ball. around. No, no, it's left touch a quarter. Left, left touch, touch a quarter, quarter walk, walk and dodge, dodge wheel, wheel around, around. Or touch a quarter, walk and dodge, reverse wheel around. Yeah, wherever and I use... Have, sorry, wherever you have your trailers doing the walk, they should be the ones doing the, the walk. outside of the turn. And now we get to the issue of the of how many dancers do not really know what a reverse wheel around is, and then it becomes a stop and go motion as they try to figure out which way am I going. I so you cure think, them. I, well, you can cure them, but I personally think walk and dodge is one of the worst calls ever to come along, and that's just my personal opinion. And the only way that I actually use it on a regular basis is if, if I'm doing it standard position, it's walk and dodge and boys fold. If it's the left touch a quarter walk and dodge where the girl walks, it's walk and dodge girl fold, and then it'll go to a left touch a quarter because she's turning to her left. Now, if, 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 if it's more of a DVD situation and I've got a boy girl walking and, let's, and it's it's walk and dodge and walkers fold. I don't like the back and forth, uh, the slide over in the back for the partner trade that usually gets called on a walk and dodge partner trade. And, and I do not like the use of reverse wheel around unless you're actually workshopping it and then you're doing the comparison. But I fear that some of this stuff gets written into modules and gets ends up in a stack and then it gets called and the dancers aren't expecting it. And then it's not comfortable. That's my this, fear. This, and it's a very valid point. One of the things that is going on, uh, when I came here to Australia, when I left North America, I came here to Australia and wheel around, reverse wheel around. They're at basic, they're at mainstream, they're at plus. It's, it's 
mm. all over the place. It's, it is so common, a movement here, <clears throat> that it's just second nature. It's not the same everywhere. We talked about but standard a, positions. We start, a, talked about standard applications a while back, and very few callers have actually read the standard applications oh, document that understand what a standard application is, where it's come to the point, standard application is what's common in my area. And if your area is DVD, that's standard application. If, you're, if your area is we dance plus, but we will only do, you know, load the boat and relay the Ducey and coordinate, that's it. That's our entire plus program because that's what the dancers want. That's your standard application. That's not technically correct, but the whole thing is we're not here for the technically correct of the callers. We're here for the dancers. And what the dancers want is what we have to deliver. And if we want them to want more, we have to deliver it properly. There's an argument for what Bob says, yes, you can cure it. There's an argument for what uh, uh, Mike says, if it's not common, it's something that you want to workshop in your area. And if people start picking it up and using it more, maybe it will become common. But if, if they don't, don't force it. If you're going to use it, you do it as a workshop. That's caller judgment, which is a whole really important thing of calling that, that needs to go through. And now, Mickey, you had a, a question, and then Bob, you had a question. Yeah, and uh, we have learned in, in those sessions that there is, um, with the wheel around and reverse wheel around, there's a Swedish version to it, right? Yeah. Um, so whatever works for the dancers and whatever they do is correct. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for, for they, those of you they that fit the body here, flow. But, yeah, for those of you that weren't here when uh, Ellen was talking about it, and I think Hannah and Lars, you were you were here for that one as well. Um, they often don't say reverse wheel around because, as Mike says, oh, reverse. They suddenly got to stop and think, what's a reverse? They just call wheel around, and the dancers go with whatever the smoothest body flow is, and they'll do a reverse wheel around or they'll do a wheel around because that's the way they do it. And it was it was a very interesting comment that was going on. Uh, thanks, Mick. I, I forgot all about that. Uh, Bob, you have your hand up, and then Guido. Yeah, uh, they're trying to promote this SSD program, which heavily uses wheel arounds and reverse wheel arounds. So uh, I tell my dancers, do you want to be able to dance with the beginners or you're going to break down? So we're going to look at it. And we're going to work on it. But we missed the point on reverse wheel around. And I'm as guilty as anybody else. When I started a beginner class or a one night stand, I'll do a wheel around. Then I'll do another wheel around. And do you know that 50% of the dancers will do a reverse wheel around from a wrong way promenade? That's the point where we should introduce reverse wheel around. And they will adapt to it very easily. Then we, we use it in other choreography, we can do that. Now, how I apply that when I'm working to a plus group and they find it hard, I'll do the same thing. I'll do Alabama left promenade, wheel around wrong way promenade. Now, the boys in front reverse wheel around. And so they get the idea of the right hand action. Uh, we can do so much teaching without teaching, without walkthroughs, I should say. The trouble with teaching today in square dancing is the lengthy walkthroughs and the analytic, the analysis that we give on it. To me, a teach is get people to accomplish a flow as smoothly as possible, as quickly as possible without teaching. And if I'm going to teach something different uh, and I want them to be able to get a feel of it, I try to create a body flow, okay? Uh, like I said, walk and dodge is very big with me. Uh, uh, from an ocean, lines past the ocean. Boys zoom while the girl, or no, past the ocean, great. Boys fold, while the girls zoom, the boys dodge. You've accomplished a, a recycle flow. Do you tell them that's recycled? No, you get them comfortably doing that and it it doesn't take but one or two times and they'll get it and you could do other variations of it uh, when i'm teaching recycle when i first reteach it or teach it 
I start from a squared set and I do this uh, a half sachet and touch a quarter. Okay, spread in single file promenade home around the outside. And then I'll do touch a quarter, or spread promenade one quarter, face the backs of the sides. And I'll get them to doing that. And I'll do a pass the ocean girls fold promenade a quarter, face their backs, which is a long recycle. But then I'll have them do the same thing on the inside. Heads past the ocean girls fold single file on the inside promenade home or a promenade is, is it, I, I'm I'm just gonna interrupt you for a second. Does everybody understand what Bob is saying about introducing he's not teaching recycle. What he's doing is teaching that body flow or that type of flowing action of body movement so that their body is used to the kinesthetics or the actual action of a flow that would be incorporated with the recycle. So that when it comes right. time to teach recycle, they're already used to doing that kind of a body action or a body movement. He's not teaching recycle because they're much bigger, but what he's doing is he's getting them used to that let go of hands and that flow that is incorporated with recycle. But One thing I did not understand, if I may interrupt, is um, recycle is the mainstream program, but uh, you said something about spread using that terminology, and that's the plus program. How does that work? Uh, then I'll do a touch a quarter and slide apart. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And this, this is one of one of the things that um, I think Yolanda was talking earlier as well. We as callers discuss choreography. And as Bob very eloquently said, having to stop and walk through the technicalities of the choreography and explain, you know, this is this and conduct basically a theological seminary to teach a movement is never a good idea. Um, I know, Mike, you, you generally do this in your newer dancer classes. I believe the first two sessions, the music hardly ever comes off. And most of your learning is done just constant movement with prompted actions to get the flow. Uh, mm -hmm. is, is that still correct? Which Mike's talking to? Sorry? Sikorsky one. Me. Yeah, <laughs> yes. Uh, I'm, 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 Bob and I have a little bit different styles on things, but but basically we we both like to keep the music going and have and make it the whole idea of calling a beginner's a class uh, to me is absolutely wrong. This isn't a class. This is a dance. Every time they come in, um, right? You know they better feel like a square dancer on their first on their first session. I mean I have them in the big circle for the first tip. You know. But uh, after that, we put them in the second time, put them in the put them in a big circle, and then I'll pick a couple and we'll have them make a four couple circle and get them all lined up in squares, teach them that's their home position, and have them promenade all the way around back to their home spot. Then you can have the heads pass through, teach them that, and have them promenade back to their home. Sides do that, and about the third time, they found home. They look around; they're in a square you can see the light come on in their eyes. I'm a square dancer. And that's when you started to set the hook. Uh, so it's, with, got to, it's got to be a dance. Right. And with all that, the music doesn't come off because almost all of the time, what they're doing is they're moving. They're right. not well, now, stop, I'll take the music I'm not going to stop and teach them. And, sorry, now, go ahead. now that I'm wearing hearing aids, <laughs> I understand the issues. And so I tend to just stop the music and give a quick teach, but that music's not off for more than 20 seconds. And it's back on, and then we're moving through a, through a call as I directed. So I do stop the music here and there, but, but okay. that's a, a hearing issue with the age I tend to deal with in my area. Um, and you, you made a comment earlier about walk and dodge. I watched a couple of your videos. I very rarely see you do a walk and dodge to end in line facing out, but you do a lot of walk and dodges with center with the, the quarter box, heads touch a quarter, walk and dodge, and do something forward with the outside couple. You do a lot of that, but I very rarely see you do a walk and dodge with the lines facing out. Even, even, even that, heads touch a quarter and walk and dodge, I gave that up about 10 years ago. So that, that and just for that reason, even the sideways to a forward uh, there are certain little things that happen in the dance experience like that that I think 
wear people out and cause them to leave the dance a tip earlier than you might otherwise. I had a dancer last night that had danced with us in the morning, danced somewhere else in the afternoon, and came to my dance last night and had decided ahead of time, I'm tired, I'm gonna make sure, I'd, I'm, I'm gonna leave early. And I sat down and was visiting with her and people at her table, and she says, I was gonna leave early, what happened? We can only have one more tip, I think I'll just stay for the last tip. But if they're having so much fun and she didn't yeah. get more tired because I didn't do that sideways to a forward and I didn't violate hand rules like like uh, the square through four to a star through where the girl has to use the left hand and raise, raise it again. Those little things that wear people out, if you don't do them, they tend to stay toward more toward the end of the dance and that helps the spirit of the dance helps everybody want to come back next time more yeah there were two two things that were said earlier that i do want to comment on um one was said earlier in a different session we have a lot of side close side close forward side close back side close forward that is done in round dancing that is so smooth and so elegant why is it uncomfortable in square dancing and I was struggling to find the answer. And well, there's a very common sense answer to it. And the answer is watch the feet of round dancers. They have a natural rise and fall. When they do this actions, their timing is exactly on the beat of the music because that's the way that they're timed to do it. But the rise and the fall is complementary to that. And the support with the other dancer is part of that. A walk and dodge, for instance, touch a quarter, walk and dodge, whatever you follow that with or a boys run partner trade which is another one that has that kind of an action not always comfortable because we dance flat-footed we slide our toe and put our heel down round dancers don't do that they have a rise a natural rise and fall you will see some square dancers that will say this is perfectly comfortable but watch how they dance it if you're ever curious chances are the ones that are finding that comfortable are round dancers um, and as Mike says, to do a movement like walk and dodge, heads touch a quarter, walk and dodge, right and left through, okay? Once or okay. twice, but that's not something you want to use all night because it makes the dancers tired. You want to break anything like that up with good flow. The other one, I think, Mike, you mentioned this, and this has to, uh, a right and left through into a left hand star. Where it's squared. And I, hang on, let me finish. Let me finish. Terrible, terrible choreography for square dancing, but it's in a lot of contra dances and a lot of things like that. The reason is also because the timing and the essence, the linear actions of these, um, a lot of these dances, a contra, a right and left through, there's the right and left through, there's the action, there's the stop. Everything is on that exact eight beat figure, whereas square dancing changes from four to three to two to six to 12 to nine. Everything is based on eight or 16 and the dancers are adapted so that when they do these movements, they have the time and the timing that is added to an expected flow because this is what they're taught. This is part of that dance. And that's why sometimes something that would be absolutely horrible in square dancing can see, seem so smooth in um, Scottish country dancing, in English country dancing or in contrast so please do not compare round dancing and line dancing and contras and folk dancing with square dancing because the whole body mechanics, the timing are very, very different. If you're gonna talk body flow and smoothness, concentrate on the dance type that you are doing right now and that will help you a lot more in the future. I just wanted to clarify that. Well, uh... I would like to comment that one of my favorites, and I do use it a lot, heads heads touch a quarter, walk and dodge, veer right. It's just yeah. that I like to use it. Couples circulate. And I have, have had no f body flow problem with anybody calling that. When, and one of the reasons why that would be very successful for Bob, Bob is a stickler for at the end of your movement, if you can't take the hand, touch the hand. And when he teaches a walk and dodge, that's the hand contact there. The lead dancer is already moving to the right, the hand contact, the trailing dancer can see him moving to the right, the timing is right. So he's gonna start his action to the right to go into that beer. 
that's timing. If you do that with stop action, that would be terribly uncomfortable, but I know Bob doesn't do that. Getting back to the, the flow that we have here, there's one here, you see a lot of these things. Like we, we understand why girls flutter wheel from a standard couple. What's wrong with that? Everybody does the flutter wheel. It's a girl's lead flutter wheel. Yeah, it's the same with this. Uh, from a standard couple. Touch a quarter. Scoot back, boys. No. Well, I don't have a problem with scoot back boys because the word boys falls after scoot back. It's, it's a, in my opinion, a cue instead of help. Yeah. They might say scoot back, go boys. Scoot back, go girls. Uh, particularly for the newer dancers that are just learning the call. Um, but I strongly object to putting the word boy or girl before the word scoot back because now you're, now it sounds like the word boy is required for the call and now you're misleading the dancers. I call that creating brain damage, that and many yeah. other things. And, and it, it, it's like any of the other calls, if you create, when you're doing something like this, you create an expectation in the dancers that is contrary to what they're teaching. Putting boy scoot back, girl scoot back, absolutely wrong, because everybody does a scoot back, unless you're breaking it such as boy scoot back, girl dodge, or something like that. That's the only time you would use that. Scoot back boys, scoot back girls, is a timing thing that is done usually as Philly. You'll see, you'll see and hear that a lot in singing calls. Touch of course, scoot back boys, scoot back girls. It's a prompt. Is it wrong? There's yes. an argument for it. There is an argument for it. It is not a scoot back boy. It's <laughs> more, more clearly, it would be boys in. Right. Scoot back girls in. Uh, it's a prompt, but you will hear that and see that. And this is the argument I wanted to make. This is common as a prompt, but I see this all the time where boys is put here, and that's exactly the point I wanted to make. If you're going to use a prompt, make sure your prompt is clear, but also make sure you know where it is. For instance, if you have a double, or sorry, after a Ferris wheel, it's the same issue as saying centers zoom. Has a completely different meaning than everybody's zoom. Do you want them to step to a wave or do you want them to zoom? Because that's what center zoom will do from that. So what do you then call a head square through four, single circle to a wave, scoot back, it's co-ed? Yeah, why not? Actually, when it, would, it depends on who you're calling for, but when I'm trying to get people to do that, that, for instance, don't workshop to me on a regular basis to guest dance somewhere, particularly as newer dancers, uh, it'll be scoot back and boys do it, then the next time I call it, if I want to bring them into that, I'll say, scoot back, go boys, scoot back, go girls. Well, then the next trick is to make sure the waves are closer together. So it'll be like, a, for instance, a head square through four, touch a quarter, centers trade. And then I'll say, scoot back, boy, girl. And then I'll call it again, scoot back, girl, boy. And you're helping people to see that box right after they saw the wave. And that allows you to create a different dance experience and they can get a different way. But it's all in the timing and the delivery. And Absolutely. All does, of that. does everybody see the difference between a command and an assistive prompt? Because that's really what we're talking about. And that, that's an mm -hmm. important thing for callers to develop is, is that nuance of what is an assisted prompt? as opposed to what becomes a command. Scoot back boys can become a command if it's done incorrectly. And if it, is, it becomes an issue, if it becomes a calling habit. Um, but if you say girl boy, it's co-ed or who's looking in or scoot back boys in or scoot back girls in or scoot back, it's a lefty. You know, center scoot back, it's a lefty. That's not going to create an issue but changing where you put things is, is a lot different. For instance, if I have um, head square through four, swing through boys run, tag the line, cloverleaf. I now have a double pass through with the girls in the center. 
If I call girl Zoom, 90% of your floor would do it. It's incorrect. But if I say before that girls are the leaders, Zoom, or Zoom girls go out, I've changed how the presentation of what I'm saying to give a directive prompt. And there's nothing wrong with a directive prompt like both Mike and Bob are saying, it's co-ed or boy, girl, girl, boy, boys in, girls in, nothing wrong with that. As long as your prompt is clear to the dancers that it is a prompt, it's an assist that, to generate success. And that's what you want. Yes, Guido. And then Mickey. This is a problem with people that speak English as a mother tongue. Mm -hmm. If you're in our area, where the people are speaking a foreign language to square dance, um, it's quite different. Uh, they, everything that's English, they try to figure out if it's a command or not. Um, so some of the helper words the American callers do confuses our dancers. And, I, and that's not that's not just uh, it is a bigger problem with English as a second language. But it's also a big problem with English as a first language, because oh, in, in English case, is one of those anomalies that people that speak English are divided by a common language. Yeah, but we, it's and, not, and, the, uh, not, not, not English as a second language, because many of our dancers, well, uh, they don't speak English as a second language. They might have learned it in school, but they don't speak it. They, they don't have absolutely no command of English. They understand square dance English, and every English word they try to filter for is it somewhere in the definition. Yeah. And um, some some of those helper words American callers uh, bring over here confuses some of our dancers. Absolutely. Now, I, I'm hoping to do a, a full session on body flow uh, in the new year. Just, just talking about the nuances of the body flow, but we'll we'll talk about these in general things, uh, you know, star through and zoom, um, star through and square through, right and left through, veer right, why it is, why it isn't, where the issues are, things to be aware of. So that that's a session that we were hoping to, but it is something that is very important, as well as helper words and and assisting. Uh, one of the greatest things I love watching sometimes, I was watching, um, I think it was, I can't remember, I think it was in Germany or it might have been in Czechoslovakia, but it was one of the big dances that was over there. And the helper words are always in a foreign language. And it's, it's great because you watch people that speak English because there's a few uh, Americans and, and one Canadian that I was watching in the square trying to figure out the helper words. <laughs> because the helper words were delivered the same as the command, but it was easy to tell. And as Guido was saying, the command is in English, but the helper word is in a different language. But if you're if you're attuned to listening, how a caller delivers a call and helper words have two different nuances in the delivery tone. And when you're listening to square through blah blah blah, blah in the same tone, regardless of what language is in, your ear tunes in to say, oh, I missed something. And you have no idea what it missed. It, it's really quite. In, it's a. It's a fascinating study. Um, Julian, you put scoot back from a column. You don't see why the centers can't scoot back. Um, scoot back is a box action, unless otherwise defined. So if you're in an ocean wave, scoot back is two boxes. It's a. It's a split action or it's a two couple action. So this is why you. Technically, the centers don't do the scoot part of a scoot back, even though it wouldn't make any difference. It's a triple scoot because we're changing the parameters of the definition from a two couple to a full square. That, that, that's the answer to your question there. The difference would be effective in the plus if you call a roll because he would get something different. Yeah. But um, and, uh, adding to, to the. I actually, no, no, actually, the difference wouldn't be because the scoot back is defined. A triple scoot is defined. Uh, if the dance, if you call scoot back from a column and everybody does a scoot back, yes, the roll would make a difference. 
Well, would it make a difference? Not yes, yet. it would because it, it every, would make a difference. The flippers yes, it would, would but, roll, the scooters not. Yeah, but what I'm saying is it should not make a difference at the plus program because a scoot back is defined as the definition of scoot back doesn't change at the plus program. The definition of triple scoot being added where everybody is working is where it is. Scoot back itself is a two couple action. Triple yeah, yeah, but you got to make the dances aware because usually it, having triple scoot, I mean, I know former days where triple scoot was the regular scoot back on a mainstream program. Yeah. Right. And you'll, you'll, you'll hear, you'll hear on a mainstream floor, everybody scoot back centers too, or, or something like that, just for a little yeah. bit of fun. But, but on the other hand, if you call it triple scoot and roll, you only have to two flippers on the very end on the outside yeah. doing the roll part or the other six ten are not supposed to roll. But on a scoot yeah. back and roll in your column, every half you have um, uh, two people who can do the roll, which did the flip. Yeah. yeah. But that's so, close. Yeah. There is a different outcome. The one you have um, um, four T-bone pairings, and on the other one you have um, a, a, a regular box between uh, two T-bones. Yeah, so there is a difference. Oh yeah, I I, I don't argue that at all. If we look at that from a slightly the question from a slightly different angle, uh, we're wondering why if if I call a scoot back from a column, and the dancers do a triple scoot. Should I make a, a point of saying, no, that's not how you do it? And so I, that's how I sort of interpreted that question. And the answer is no, you don't want to make a big deal about it. Now, if you're teaching, I personally feel like you have to do something where it's required that they do it correctly, or it's why do I care? Maybe I want to turn with that person. I'm going to end up in the same footprint anyway. Now you got to do something different. Now, my way of doing that would not be with calling a roll because that's plus. But at mainstream where the call exists, I would, for instance, call half scoot back and show them the difference because the very center ends up in a different hand. Now you can make your next call from the center formation that's either a two-faced line or a wave. And now they, because if it's a if it's a line, they can wheel and deal, for instance. That's how you show the dancers, hey, there's a reason to do this call correctly. And then you use that. Maybe you've even worked up a, a singing call figure for it. Uh, maybe you're going to do it a little bit in patter just to play with it and have fun. But, you, but that again, that's how you teach without actually walking through everything solid. That was, that was one second, Bob. That, that's where I was going next with this. If I call a scoot back from here, you should be able to see my screen. Okay, there's a big line and then a triple scoot. It's all of the column working together. The reality is the end position is exactly the same. And if I call that on a mainstream floor, I agree with you 100%. I call scoot back and they all do and they all do a triple scoot or half the floor does a triple scoot and the rest do a scoot back. It's not going to make a difference. It's not going to make a difference in the timing. It's not going to make a difference in the end position or the flow. For God's sake, don't make an issue of it if you're teaching it. But if you go to the plus program, you may have to review the difference between scoot back and triple scoot because of the roll. And as you yeah. said, a, a quarter, and I would love to demonstrate your quarter scoot back, but contaminations won't do that for me. The question Bob, you, is hang on why are the dancers doing this? First. Because they have more room to do it and it feels better. Possibly. Yeah. Bob, you had your hand up? Yeah, it's that scoot back and roll thing has always bothered me. You know, I, I disagree, but it's the advanced level attacking the lower levels to do stuff. I remember when it was very common for a caller to call scoop back and roll and everybody rolled. In fact, given today, you can teach the call roll. And if you get to scoop back and you don't want that person going in, doing the arm term, coming back to roll, if you don't want them to roll, you have to teach them that they don't roll. It's right. not intuitive. 
You know, right. what's what's intuitive is it's a circular motion. And I have always resented that invasion to good dancing by, no, from a box four. Yeah. And these things are good, and these things are okay at advanced and challenging, if you want to specify that. But let's take a normal square, you know, if you did a square through four, touch a quarter, scoot back, and the girls roll. That's how I would do it, but that's how they define scoot back and roll. And yet the common dancer, without having been given, okay, back in the day, you could call scoop back and roll, and everybody would be facing. That would be a quarter in. But now it's a T-bone. But you have to specifically teach that scoop back and roll is done in this particular method. It's not something the dancers will figure out on their own. Uh, I, I want to add on to that. Bob, I want to add on to that before this turns into a digressive argument because it's got the potential to do so. Um, I agree wholly. When I started dancing in uh, the early 80s, scoot back and roll to face her was a very, very common prompt, usually followed by a swing at the end of a singing call. It is something that dropped off the list with the advent of role being taught from anything more than partner trade and role or touch a quarter and role. Then we got into right and left through and role past the ocean and role, all those other kinds of things. And then past the ocean and role was taken out of it because you, you can't do it past the ocean. Role became a grown up in its own right. There is an argument of you've got to teach this properly because at the higher levels, it makes a big difference. I agree wholly and fully support what Bob said. We tend to teach the lower levels to support the higher levels. And that is absolutely wrong, in my opinion. Um, there's a really, really good article in this month's uh, issue of Behind the Mic, which talks about what's in a name or the first, a first name basis. If you have a movement that says spin, it has a specific action and it means the same thing. If you have a movement that starts with the word swing, you've got a specific action. There's an anomaly in that, and it goes through to explain all of these things. It should be clear, and it should be built upon. As Mike was saying, if you're going to teach scoot back, you teach it in a teach class, and you teach it as a two-couple action if you're teaching a mainstream group. If they, if they do a triple scoot, don't make a big issue of it. If you have to come back to it, you know, set it up with, with your waves or, or whatnot. But you let the dancers feel that success. Do not teach a basic class in order to only be able to feed what is plus. If you're teaching your basic and your mainstream properly, you've already done that for plus. If you're teaching SSD properly and you want to graduate them forward into whatever the next program is, if you teach the SSD properly, the way it's supposed to be taught and you dance it the way it's supposed to be taught, you've already done the groundwork where you don't have to get into what we have today Ah, uh, we're going to start a plus good group. Yeah, great. Let's go back now, and relearn how to dance basics. A hundred percent, I can say, sign and and uh, admit what you said and and also Bob said. But on the other hand, if we move into the plus program, um, then you have to reteach definitely because then we're talking about people. We have the call roll, we have scoot back. We get in. We can are able to get in those t bones, and uh, in order to train the dancers. Um, they got to be know what they're doing and uh, especially this routine taking it I like it very much um, to work there with you know I have a kind of a thing which uh, a, a, a process management where they first before they do the call got to check what is part of the call what is my part and then after the call can I do the role? And that's uh, which has to move on and get into the dancer's mind, working um, those stations step by step. That will happen in, 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 in milliseconds, but you need to train that. And that routine with the uh, uh, touch a quarter and scoot back and roll, I like it and go into a split circulate to make them sure where is their box, where is the next move, and roll, which gets them into tandems. 
and then have a half zoom, which is a nice uh, uh, singing call figure and, and, and works smoothly and, and, and gives credit to the dancers. You got to build it up slowly, definitely. But yeah. um, and they a have lot to be of this trained. shows it shows the difference between open dance choreography, club choreography, and regional choreography, as well as geographic choreography. When you look at different things, um, and what you're saying is absolutely true. I I still stand by. If you're dancing and calling it basic and mainstream, and you you taught it right, you use it right, and you use it with variety and flair that is different but not difficult from these setups your dancers will pick it up and be much better dancers and able to progress to another level if they so choose to another program if they so choose to but if you're doing it right chances are they're not going to want to rush up to plus or they're not going to want to dance plus because they're having too much fun at basic and mainstream um, mm -hmm. and 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 that's the issue the found I'm a very strong proponent of foundation first. I am a very strong oh, proponent yeah. of don't make battles out of things that don't need to be battles. If I call, I go and call a dance and my entire club there and I call scoot back from a column and I see my entire club doing a triple scoot, I'm not going to do that at a column or at a dance. When I come back to my own club, I might do get them into a column and say, just the center four, scoot back. In now, in your own four, scoot back. And just work my choreography like that. I won't even correct it, but I'll correct the flow and the idea of how it works without stopping and chastising or stopping and reteaching, just so they get the idea. There's all sorts of things that go into that kind of... Uh, and that, that, again, is judgment call. That, that, again, is the ability to adapt your style for dancer success without making them feel like they've done something wrong. It's not an issue you want to make a big mole, uh, you know, make a mountain out of. Do you agree with that? Yeah. Another thing adding to what we had before with the filler words um, or with the, the helping, with the hints, to me, more or less, they're kind of additional because they can be hints and helping the dancers, but as well, they could be an entertaining tool as well. And therefore, you got to be careful on that the command is clear because sometimes dancers only would react on the help words. Think about take a peek. They would run ahead and, and trade the wave. But if you just call trade the wave, they wouldn't do it because what's, what's the call? Okay. So dancers need to know both or need to know when there is a helping or, or additional wording, whether it is an entertaining type thing. Um, or to keep the, the rhythm, um, or if it is, is a, a help uh, for moving along the way. So yep. we've got to be really cautious as callers I, with I the delivery. Saw, oh, there's an old record. I saw it recently, and it made me do a double take because it, it's going back, and it said um, uh, it had a Dixie style to an ocean wave, balance and look, trade the wave, which is take a peek is a balance, look where you're going and back. And that there, there's actual timing to take a peek. It's just like balance forward and back. That's your take a peek. That seems to have disappeared somewhere along. And when I saw that, I wish I could find it again. But when I saw that, it reminded me that there is a difference between a helper word and an actual command prompt. And one of the things that happens an awful lot is command prompts become filler. Go up to the middle and back. How many callers call go forward and back after a bend the line as filler for their timing to do? Now they're bending the line forward and back. It's time for the next call because that's how long it took them to bend the line. You know, do the right and left through, pass through and bend the line and a right and left through. Great forward and back, pass through, bend the line, go up and back and a right and left through. It's the same timing, but except you don't have that one, two, three, touch, back, two, three, touch that is there, that is necessary because you called it. Right. And this is one of the things yeah. that happen with, with filler words. Take a peek actually has a dancing action. It's not just a look. It used to be take a peek, trade the wave. There was a balance there. I don't know where it disappeared or when it disappeared, but it has disappeared in a lot of places. 
And I might say that was another sad thing in the history of square dancing was the attacks on up to the middle and back. And it was truly happened because it was overused, but then it was almost totally eliminated. But up to the middle and back has a tremendous advantage of canceling out, neutralizing body flow. You know, if you had been going right or left. Yeah. And part, part and parcel of a lot of these movements, a balance is one is to establish formation and also to neutralize a potential overflow for the next command. Forward and back is a timing to, as, as a timing filler and to change body flow. Um, I have a few movements of mine. One is do si do to an ocean wave. I love a do si do make a wave. I don't use it, but I use it for a dose I don't make a wave centers trade. And right. I hear constantly, uh, oh, you don't say dose I do to a wave. They may have done that in the past, but you don't say that. If you just want to make a wave in the, in the centers trade, or you just call, well, no, I, dose I do has a timing. You've got the beats of music to dance, dose I do to a wave, or dose I do make a wave. Make a wave is filler to establish a formation for the centers trade. And it's also the best setup for a fan the top. Do sa do to a wave and fan the top. Yeah. It's just where, such a natural where good a flow. Is, yeah, where it became a problem is very much what Bob was saying. There was such a strong outcry from technical callers, I call them, on, and this goes to what Edeltraud was saying earlier, you do a Ferris wheel, centers pass or you shouldn't say centers because who else is going to do it well there's nothing wrong with it um do si do to a wave became a crutch do si do make an ocean wave swing through became a crutch and then it became a command habit because oh you don't have to say make a wave before you, you do a swing through because there's you're facing couples there's your ocean wave rules there's all these other things that play Guess what? There's nothing wrong with it if it helps the dancers. If that's your purpose, use it for that. But don't make it a crutch to your calling. If you're going to call something, make sure there's, um, oh, I'll, I'll steal this right from Daryl Clendenin. If you're going to put anything out of that microphone, do it for a reason. And your only reason is for the dancers, whether it's for entertainment, whether it's for command, whether it's for help. If it's for you, Coming out of that mic, you're doing it wrong. Does that make sense to everybody? I agree. Well, I want to add something else in here. Um, although I semi-agree semi with the up to the middle and back, uh, I preach against it. And, and the, the way I preach against it is it's not a crutch. It's not giving you time to think about what you don't call it because you need the extra three seconds to think of something to call. you got to plan better than that. But I believe that up to the middle and back should be managed. The very Absolutely. same way we manage square through, the very same way we manage swing through, spin the top, the very same way we manage scoot back, it has to be managed. And I believe that the best, as the term flow, the floor equalizer, the flow equalizer, is to put them into a normal two-phase line and call a couple circulate. And they don't know you're equalizing the floor, but that's when your eyes go across. If you got one square, you got two squares, you got five squares, your eyes go all across that, let them get to that two-phase line. And the worst thing you can call is bend the line up to the middle and back. You equalize them on the couple circulate because they don't know they've been equalized. It's still part of the dance experience now you can say, bend the line reverse flutter. Because yep, they're all absolutely. with you. You can even bring them into that, which leads to a Dixie style. Or you could say, bend the line past their wheel and deal. You could say, tag the line, whatever it is. But they're all going to take that next call on the same footstep. The absolutely. same music. And that's how you equalize. That's the, in my opinion, that's the best way to equalize the floor. When, when, okay. when I say call or crutch, um, I'm not... I, I agree with you 1,000% if you can get 1,000%. Um, when I say a caller crutch or a caller habit, 
one of the things that did happen and why it became such an outcry is it became so overused, it became part of the command word of bend the line, bend the line, go forward and back, bend the line, go forward and back, pass through, bend the line, forward and back, wherever you ended up in lines, circle to a line, forward and back. It became part of line terminology as opposed to, as you, I love that term, it's a managed flow. I love that and I'm going to sure. feel that. I'm going to, sorry, I'm going to research that into my repertoire. <laughs> um, you do. You should never call anything, nothing that comes out of that mic should not be for a specific purpose and that purpose should always be the dancers on the floor. Whether it's to entertain, inform, or direct. Okay? If you're calling for them, you're calling for them. If you're using it just to help you with your timing and that fillers for your timing, you got to really, really think. It will develop and we encourage callers to use filler for their timing at the start, but it's a weaning process, the same as helper words are a weaning process. Yes, Bob? Yeah, it was a caller lab and they were, we were in discussions on how to resolve a situation where two people had switched, one boy and one girl. So, and their thing was to set it up so you could call boys run and bend the line. Well, when the boys run, we had three couples facing in and one couple facing out or vice versa, it didn't matter. Well, if you if you call the bend the line after the boys run, for one couple, it was a back right breaker. But that wonderful have never used call, if you call everybody go forward and back, bend the line, that flows. And it brings the lines into facing lines in a natural position with positive flow. So that's an example of using the forward and back in a good way. And see, so when I have squares break down and mess up, and I will use that forward and back, now my club knows. They, they could just sense it from, I don't know if you'd call it three by one couples, you know. <laughs> One couple yeah. is facing the wrong direction. Do that forward and back, and backing up into a bend the line is so natural, and then call, touch a quarter, whatever. But it's a good call. One of the other ones that does that, if you're watching your flow and your line is established, uh, either use left or standard, but tag the line, face a direction, will also achieve the same outcome. Yeah, okay because all you've done is you've changed, you've stopped that action, tagged the line, there's that double passer, and uh, face right, face left, bend the line. You, you've got that same kind of thing where you had one facing wrong, doesn't really matter, face right, face left, but because you've changed that action with a quick action, the bend the line is not going to be an issue there. Uh-huh, and to use what I was calling just say couple number one do a half sash a square through four swing through AC Ducey boys run now you got that three couples clockwise one counterclockwise I'm and the sure line which. would be very very ouch for one of the boys there uh, would be very very awkward but if you go forward and back then it's very smooth for everybody and it feels and you've strange been normalized you've facing out doing the forward and back as well different? Yes. Difficult. Go ahead. Um, I have to say, especially with students up to the basic um, um, one or two, um, I like the, the up to the middle and back, especially with the student dances. If you see the whole floor big crowded and big lines and going forth and back, that's just a nice view. To see and work them, have them all move with the same foot, and working do side do from a line to get them on the same timing, on the same step, get them all working together as one group. Um, I like it, especially with the beginners if they don't have too much. Um, and uh, yeah, and it gives a fantastic view for those on 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 the on the outside watching the dancers. That is one thing which fascinated me when I started dancing years and years ago. And they had the big student jamborees with hundreds and thousands of dancers down there. It was just 
taking a look like in the ocean with the waves going up and back with the star throughs and dive throughs and everybody was just on beat and i think we have to get back to that not to get too technical but to get more dancing in there yeah just like we've been talking here over and over or yeah mike said very eloquently at the beginning when the dancers are dancing and having fun their very first night their square dancers are having fun and when you give them something like that they're going to give somebody that is an activity that is really cheap to attend i know square dancing isn't cheap but it's cheap it's not costly to attend a square dance comparatively to everything else that they're going to come and have a social connection and have fun and enjoy themselves doesn't matter if you take six years to teach basic. If you give them a product they want to come to, they'll be there. And and you know, we don't need to rush. I mean, SSD is a rush as far as I'm concerned. Um, I don't not support the program, and I don't support the program because I'm not calling the program. So that would be inappropriate for me to do so. But objectively, it has its benefits it has its merits it has its strengths it has its inherent weaknesses most of those all fall to the caller not to the program itself and the same is said about the other programs the weaknesses of those programs is not the program it's we as callers and what we do with them and part of it is very much what you're saying mickey let's get back to entertaining the dancers with not only our presentation but with our choreography so that they're happy they feel good and they want to come back for more sure. Yes, Bob. You could do SSD philosophy with basic. Oh, absolutely. After all, there's there's more calls in the SSD program than there is in the basic program. And I know it's worked because I did it in the 90s. I went from a six-couple club to 430 members. But we had a separate night to do it on. And... Every time I finished a class, we had another class. And that well, you've got it's the concept. Walk around your corner and seesaw. Okay, how long does it take you to teach walk around the corner? No, no, I, I, was just, I, I only put that out for everybody in case they, they're not familiar with the programs. If the difference between basic and SSD, if you take the mainstream program, though, is walk around yeah. your corner, seesaw, and do paso. That's it. Well, let me jump yeah. in, support in support of you here, because uh, I can tell you two things about SSD. One is, I'm starting a, a beginner's class for a local club coming January, and the first 10 weeks or so of that class will be SSD. And I hope in that period of time to talk the club in to dancing SSD instead of mainstream, at least for a while, and then they can get, we can get another class started for them and build the numbers up because if you do that, they're gonna be inviting people in when they're the most excited about square dancing, that 10 week level, and they still have friends that don't square dance. I think that's yes. big. The other thing that's important, and Bob's and Bob's right on page with me on this, for, I've been calling almost 50 years, and for about the last 45 of that 50, the first 10 weeks of every class I've ever taught, almost to the call, is SSD. One of the worst things you can do in a class, in my opinion, is to teach walk around the corner and seesaw and alamanthars and alamo rings too early in the class. I think the SSD program is really good and all those calls that were omitted belong to be taught after the set of SSD calls. And I feel very strongly about that. I have for almost 50 years. Yes, Guido. I personally, well, I support that. Um, walk around the corner and seesaw too early is something that should not be done. On the other hand, um, these are calls that I teach when half of the class is missing because of whatever reason. Um, I teach them the arm turns without using the hands. Well, walk around and seesaw is nothing else. It's just like a, a right and left grand and weave the ring. It's the same combination or the same relationship. And they have learned something new and the others don't miss anything because it's actually, well, when I teach them, 
they are already dancing for 10, 12, 13, 14 weeks. This is, these are calls that, are, that I don't need for choreography. Uh, and because you can just do them with the arm turns. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I teach element lift after about week 10 or so, uh, because before I have the arm turns, I have stars and I have arm turns. I don't need an element lift. I think it's a very complicated movement. And something I've seen where I've, where I've been, element lift is a very difficult dance movement for all the dancers in black and white. There are some that master it, but most of them don't. Um, I know I teach my dancers correctly. And my dancers do the same mistake as everybody else. If I don't say anything after element left, they wait for the next call with holding the corner on their arm. They don't let loose and don't make the step forward. And I know I have taught it more than once to each of the dancers. And I've seen it everywhere else I called. When I don't say anything after an element left, they hold the corner at the, on, on their arm. They don't let loose. They don't feel safe just taking a step forward. But on the other hand, if I tell, call arm turns and don't say anything else, they let loose and go take a step forward. Yeah, I don't understand it. I just accept it. It's, it it have... falls into what Mike was saying earlier, Mike Sikorsky was saying earlier. The dancers have an anticipation and they have a, an expectation. And if the dancers have an expectation of the next call, they're going to wait to make sure that they're going to get the next call right, which is why those habits build. Um, one of the big things I noticed, one of the big transitions uh, between Europe and North America was because they're dancing from a translation of English into German or into Swedish or into Dutch or whatever, and then back to English, because the commands are put back in English, what you get is that explanation and looking at the calls more objectively as to the difficulty level. In North America, Alamand left do si do are so ingrained into square dancing that everybody pretty much, they're, they're part of the common vernacular, the common language. Even if you're a non-square dancer, chances are you know what an Alamand left is and you know what a do si do is because they're so, much a part of the, the, the common knowledge, whereas that may not be common in other parts of the world. And this, those this are is what those, happens. Those are those in, in, in my printed book of Webster's. Yep. So, um, I have something to add things. to what Guido said. Absolutely. Because I made the same observation. And up to, I would say the first three or four class nights, I would not even use arm turns. I would use mini stars and I have um, very much success with that because I think the arm turns and especially the element left, they are not only causing trouble when doing those arm turns, but later on with the ocean wave because the dancers are getting a habit of holding on for one thing and turning towards the one they're playing with instead of looking to the free hand. And so with the stars, they have almost nothing with the mini stars to hold on. And so they're looking on the free hand. And, then, and on the first night, I do dance a do paso. I don't call it, but I give them, as we had it before already talked, I give them the kinesthetic flow with having a left-hand star mm -hmm. with a partner, coming back to the corner right-hand star, back to the partner left, keep that girl promenade, and it smooths floatly. I don't have to explain anything. And we move to the music, and it is a different feeling. And once they have the stars in their mind, in their subconscious, and they're so familiar in, 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 in walking the eights, then I slowly start giving them the arm turn. But as soon the as they set. keep holding on and grabbing and looking back to the one they were playing with, instead of looking on the free hand, going to the next person, I go back to the stars. And once 
that is perfect, then I will, uh, maybe not on the 10th night, but maybe on, on the 8th night, we'll work with the LMN left. And I have figured out, for I've been doing that for the past 8 to 10 years now, that the troubles on the ocean wave with the swing through when um, going from one hand to the other, is that they do not tend to look at the one they're playing with the right, but looking on the free hand and going from to the left hand and alternating the hands instead of having a turning action and wanting to look at the one they're turning with. This is, this is one of the things that it's important that callers with experience share this kind of information. I, I've never actually had a problem. I do teach Alaman lefts. I do teach my arm turns and my turn throughs, but I teach them as a release action. And I, I very, you know, an Alaman left is not finished until you have let go of that hands and stepped ahead. A dos I do is not finished until you're face to face with the person you did the dos I do with. And then as it's done, we progress to or, or where the next direction is. I just want to interrupt for a second. Um, Mark Hart is about to leave us for the moment because he's going off to call a dance. And I want to say a very, very special thanks to Mark. Uh, he's just getting his car ready to load. Mark has acted as our co-host for the last year and a half. He's also the one that's done all of the technical background work, putting the uh, material, the videos, and all the supporting material up on the Orange County Caller website, which he hosts, and making that available to everybody. And I want to say a big, very special thank you to Mark for all the help you've given me over the years and uh, for hosting this and for making this as an available resource and good luck with your dance today i don't know if you're still there or you're out loading the car at the moment but it's on video so it's official now <laughs> um yeah if you have things like this um mike you said this in one of your caller schools that one of the biggest adv advantages of calling is learning from other callers not just what works but what doesn't work uh, because yes. when you learn when you learn the material that's presented at a caller school you're getting a written down document it's getting presented fast and you're supposed to take that home and learn it and that is something that if you have something to share like making a mini star and doing your arm turns with the with the hand up or where you are with the hand down the release action if those things work for you then adapt them. If they don't work for you and you have a, a way that works for you better, then share that. And guess what? Guido and, and Mickey's method of doing that may not work where you are, but your method may not work where they are. That doesn't make your method wrong. If your dancer is doing an Alaman left as a release and step ahead to the next dancer, then you're not doing it wrong. If they are doing it holding on, try one of these techniques. It may help you assist your dancer. Uh, it's like when Bob was talking about, um, when we we're talking about the chicken plucker getting into that right hand lady box, instead of calling right and left through pass through trade by or dive through pass through, just call pass through trade by or dive through pass through. You've got the same right hand box, but it's in sequence as opposed to out of sequence, which is what most people are working with. If some, we had a number of very positive comments about that because uh, I think Mike, you did this in your activator system a little bit as well, because it made them look at that. Oh, that makes more sense now because I can see that they're in sequence. That person had a, a mind that was tracking the dancer's sequence as opposed to the arrangements and everything else that worked for them. And because that worked for them, that became the method of preference. It's not wrong. It's just a different way of looking. And there are thousands of different ways of looking at this type of material. So. I stress, find what works for you, build on it. If you want to learn site calling, find what works for you, build on it. If you want to learn resolution, find a technique that works for, me, for you, build it, make it yours, that's your foundation, and build from there. There's, there's, there are rights and wrongs as what you should and should not do, but what works best for you may not work for everybody, and what works best for Mel Wilkerson or Mike Sikorsky uh, or Jeff Seidel may not work for you. But you may have something that, hey, try this, and wow, uh, you know, I think the the most poignant thing was the comment that um, Don Beck made. We had Dave Prescott here doing uh, three sessions on mental image calling, and Don Beck 
actually said to date, you know, Don Beck is, you know, he wrote the book out of sight. He's considered the guru of, of mental image calling, even though Don attributes a lot of his son to building a J. King started and others started before him. Said, Don said to Dave, I wish I'd known that when I wrote the book. It's in the next edition. That's how we develop our skills, is by sharing this knowledge. So if you got the advantage, do it. Two things I want to say before I pass it on. Um, for newer callers at Caller Lab, there is a new committee called the, uh, I think it's the Newer Callers Committee or New Callers Committee. If you are a new or newer caller and you want to get involved in Caller Lab, you want to start your network of callers and support mechanisms, by all means, get a hold of Teresa at Caller Lab, callerlab at aol.com, uh, and join the committee, get involved, find out what it's about. Uh, Mickey is also, one of the things that came up is the emphasis calls are coming up. Uh, we're going to be getting, hopefully, hot and heavy into those where every quarter there'll be a new call, very similar to what we did. They're not quarterly selections, they're not experimentals, it's just taking a call and looking at it. And if you want to get involved in that, give Mickey a call. I'm quite sure he'll be very happy to receive choreography. Um, one of the things I don't believe, and you can clarify and correct this if I'm wrong after me, um, what, what the committee or what the emphasis call is looking for is good choreography that has the standard application, standard application variations, as well as some extended or as well as extended variations that are smooth and danceable. And they can be presented as full sequence choreography modules such as the corner box to corner box partner line or conversion or singing calls preferably all of them that incorporate that type of choreography but that the emphasis emphasis committee can get it out there when i say a standard application i'll use the movement recycle because i sent him about 20 some odd pages of recycle choreography He's probably received <laughs> cursing and swearing at me um actually i'll, I'll do it this way uh, Okay, so this is this is what I sent Mickey. There's the the emphasis call. This is just a, I don't I don't really know what format it's going to be, but I decided to go this way. There's the definition. There's notes about handholds. Don't have to read these if you want to. I can send it to you. A couple of teaching comments. Like standard is your boy girl or a boy, but there are other examples to vary it. The next logical step: girl girl boy boy you know, not, not immediately after, but sequential following and, and where to go. And then choreography, full sequence routines, standard, left hand, that's also considered a standard. And why a left hand wave with the girls leading is considered standard, those are the two most common because they end you in the normal facing couple and you have a normal flow sequence that usually follows that. But then you go into girl, boy, boy, girl, girl a girl, boy, boy, girl, right hand, genders paired, left hand, all boys, all girls. And then I call this a mix and match, which has a mixture of different recycles. This is getting up. So now we're getting into extended. Various get-ins, various modules and so on and so on and so on and so on and basically we're still in modules partner line to resolve and i know mickey you're probably not going to you might just pick a half a dozen of these to, to put out if, if even if you do and then singing calls using recycle from various formations and that just goes on forever in a day well the way it's going to work we have a, a subcommittee and we got some people working on a subcommittee and they will work out some routines and wherever they pick them from and then we will have a joint session where we will walk through the choreo and pick on which five or six of each um, will be picked on and put out and then they will go back to the home office which will send them probably to the edfoot and have them checked once again and then they will be um, published through the home office so this is how it's going to work. It's not going to be that much on a call. It's going to be um, two pages with the definition on one side and then working on a second page um, with, with the call. So this is pretty much standard like they used to be, how it's going to send out and 
how the procedure is going to work. And they're and they're but, calls that are already on the list. Right. Yes. Yeah. They're not new calls. It's just looking at a call. For instance, if you were doing circle to a line, okay, you could do you could circle to a line could be the emphasis call of the month or of the quarter, but it right. could be looking at circle to a line where you have the um, inside couple half sachets. So that's a, that's an extended application of a circle to a line. So you end up with a girls on the end, boys in the center line. And you've got smooth choreography that actually uses that kind of stuff. Or it might just be looking at flutter wheel and reverse flutter wheel with a different way of getting there or, you know, things like that. It's, it's not intended as a, as one caller put it, oh, caller labs wanting to chastise us for not teaching properly. That is not the intent of this at all. All it is is looking at movements and extending your knowledge base or your repertoire or your resource base of existing choreography to looking at things that are a little bit different, not difficult, but enhance your dancer's experience and, and looking at and movements just a little bit differently. And usable material, right? Yeah. So, uh, which can be used from the scratch, just to it. Of course, you should look through it, but um, ho hopefully we're going to put out material which um, you can trust us. <laughs> yeah. I would suggest all, all sequences be checked, and that's where the computer programs like SD Caller um, come in handy, those kind of things, because we had recently in, in a school I did, we re there was a caller that wanted to use certain choreography and it was in an official caller lab document. I think it was actually the SSD document. Oh, yeah, and there were lots of bad stuff there. There were lots of mistakes in that. And we they had to make notes about this doesn't work or after this, do this instead. And that we made it work. So definitely there's uh, always, always check and number two, when you do that, you're actually helping to remember it. Now you don't, when you go to call it, you don't have to read it every word for every call. You can kind of remind yourself because you partly got it in your head already. So there's yeah. always check that choreography before you use it. Any yeah. uh, having to fix a uh, having to fix a caller lab supplied choreography at a caller school is is probably actually a, a good lesson at the caller school. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, it actually was. <laughs> it, it, one thing is, one of the, probably, is it is one of those things that comes way. up. Sorry, go ahead, Nick. Is uh, one way to check it as well is uh, with the body flow and hand availability. Just like Bob checks it, he said that he's going to check it for the boy number one, the head boy, and the head lady, and the side boy, and the sideman. What about the other four, Bob? Uh, it's a little thing called symmetry. <laughs> No, just kidding. Not, not with that one figure you did, Bob. <laughs> put, put, put it this way. Make it like Santa Claus. Make, you it, know, less, make it twice. There's a thing that, that, that happened to me because I danced on the floor so much. I actually start to track dancers in, in my head. And... I'm call, I could close my eyes and call to this square in my head. I demonstrated that to Elmer Sheffield. He could not believe that the floor was dancing so smoothly to the choreography that I was calling. And, it, and I was doing DVD A2, really some far out stuff. And I didn't have to watch the floor at all. I knew exactly where I was putting people in very elaborate sequences. And some of it I made up on the go. But by making up go, I don't call calls. I call modules. I stack one of, modules. One of the best examples, and I'm not going to say who it was because you'll probably find this very rude, but um, at one of the caller schools, it was, he gave this anecdotal story. And it's the importance of watching this, whether you're a module a module caller, a reader, a memory caller, a site caller, or you use a specific system. The thing that is most important is to interact and have that interaction with your squares. Don't call from behind a table. Get out if, you, if you're set up, you know, move that over so that you've got no barrier between you and the dancer. And there was a caller that was constantly saying, 
very much like you did. And I know you watch your squares because you, you're adamant about that, Bob, but um, said, I don't have to watch my squares because I can see the dance. I've been doing this so long. I can see the dancers in my head and I'll prove it to you. You know, and he would close his eyes and call a tipper. He'd turn his back, and this was a gimmick thing that would happen in, in Germany. At some, they blindfold the caller, mm -hmm. and you're expected to call while you while you're being blindfolded at a party night or something like that. Anyway, he set him up to teach him the importance of watching the squares, and he made this thing. He said, "Well, we had a bet that I couldn't do this, so I'm going to do this." And he turned around and he started calling. What he didn't know is the other caller that was having this bet had arranged with his club. And told him what they were going to do and very quietly had all of the dancers all 12 squares left the hall while he was calling his tip with his back to the audience well, that's fine. And, and getting him out and he turned around and how's that and he turned around to an empty hall except for the other caller standing in the middle and said and that's why you watch the floor okay i <laughs> watch the floor believe no, me no, I, I, I know you do I, I just but, it, your story just reminded me of that. Anecdote, yeah, but sure. It, it is it is important, and that right. was in Germany. So if you you might know the event I'm talking about. It's like <laughs> when I had a a group of twenty squares, and in one square they made a mistake, and I and I took the time and fixed them, and they said, "How could you do that? You know, twenty squares on the floor. How could you know that we were the ones that made a mistake?" Well, you're watching your kaleidoscope flow everywhere, and all of a sudden there's this counter flow that's out of place. It stands out. And if you've called for a while, Michael agree, you know, you, your your attention is drawn to that people who do these. I, I look at it as I think square dance callers are more like sergeant majors in the army because you will hear, Wilkerson! from across the parade square from the sergeant major whenever I turn the wrong way or flinch. Yeah. It's not that he's watching me. He just sees that, hey, somebody did something different. <laughs> That's yep. what callers are. Yeah. Yep. Yep. You yep. watch everybody. Um, Mike, I do hope to get you back in the new year for a session if you are free or three or four or six or ten. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, more than welcome. Uh, and. As, as I said, I'd love to have anybody if you have a topic that you want to present. Uh, we are going to restart again probably around mid-January, but I think we're going to be going to a fortnightly schedule rather than a weekly schedule. That's still to be determined, but I think that's probably more consistent as things are starting to open up. People are getting busier and busier. Um, and we want to start looking. So if you have at you know, some of these aspects that we were talking about, I've, I've got a session on body flow, which is just sort of a preview that we're working. I'd like to have um, Reinhold come in and talk about cholerama and this flow mechanism uh, monitoring for your calling. It's a, it's a, for those of you that have never used cholerama, it's in a beta version right now, but he's making some modifications because one of the things that none of these caller lab, or caller lab, none of these caller programs do at the moment is analyze the flow. So he's written a number of algorithms for body flow with kinesthetics that tell you if you're using right hand to right hand or you know that's a sudden direction change. It's not going to tell you exactly what the flow problem is, but it'll give you a flag that says you might want to look at that flow because there could be something wrong with it. And it may be right, it may be wrong, but as I said, it's an algorithm and computers only go. So hopefully we'll look at that in the future. We'll have, uh, I do want to get you back like definitely to talk about your activator system and expand on that a little more uh, if, if you're willing because uh, there's been a lot of positive oh i want to know more about that we've only touched the base on it but i'm not quite sure you know where do i take it from here so generally speaking consider it one of the methods you use yep um, the, the whole idea of playing in the across the street box like Jerry's story we talked about, then call your right and left your pass through trade by to your Alaman left. That's another one of your calling systems. You're linking modules. That's another system. But but I, Bob isn't just talking about what we all think as that I would call a resolution module that goes from a corner box to a corner box or a corner box to a partner line. He's also talking about what I call flow modules. And that means I know that this call goes to this call, to this call, to this call, and I can use two or three calls to link these things together 
and that gives me the opportunity to watch the floor and see how they're doing and create the flow I need. And so I definitely advocate callers put together three and four call flow modules because that's when your brain can, can concentrate on how are they doing and not just what I need to call next. And then you link them together and then you have your own get out system. You build your own way of doing it. Absolutely. One of the things we talked about in, in one of our previous sessions was specifically that. And we started off um, looking at flow modules, things that you know that work together. And for newer callers, if you're going to look at flow modules, I, I strongly recommend, you don't have to, but I found this was helpful to me, is if you're looking at a flow module, look at a flow module that works as an equivalent. So you see movements that go together. We, we've seen you know, right and left through past the ocean girls trade recycle. Okay. Some people will say that works or right and left through flutter wheel, reverse flutter wheel and the outsides do a half sachet swing through boys run. That'll take us to a line instead of a circle to a line. These are, these are things that go together. One, one of my favorites is the right and left through Dixie style to a wave swing through followed by a chain down the line. Cause that's a center start swing through just feels a little different. These are flow modules, but if you understand what it does, Okay, that one of the Dixie style does the same as a reverse flutter wheel. So if you've got the flow for a reverse flutter wheel, great. But if you don't, you can use that to achieve the same effect. And these flow modules, some, some people like them, some people don't like them as equivalents, but what Mike is talking about, most callers when they've called for a while will know that this flows nicely after that. And after that, this flows nicely. You may not know where it goes, but you know they work, and it's a good way of watching the floor, especially if you're a sight caller or a mental image caller or things like that, that you can track where dancers are. They're good things to incorporate and develop into your skills. And once you start knowing what they do, wow, you've expanded your toolbox exponentially. So we, we definitely would like to have you come back and talk about some of those stuff. Uh, Guido, we're still working on. Uh, we're still waiting for a response back on your article for BTM for for January. I will be back to working at it. But do you remember my dominoes? Yes. For your college to develop the flow modules. Yep. What comes next? What comes next? What comes next? This is. And if if you're not familiar with that, that session is there. And if you wanted to know more, Guido has uh, also put his email address there on on what he calls his Domino system, but is essentially just that is analyzing the calls for what flows nicely after this, and it's it's a it's a objective analysis of one call to the next call to the next call, and you can build them all down like laying out a, a string of dominoes. Don, did you have your hand up or were you just waiting? Don Anthony? No? I want to make sure everybody uh, feels welcome to, to belong to a Caller Lab committee. Uh, I suggest you request to join the committee of your choice. And I know, like, I was just in the advanced committee meeting uh, before this, and they're already discussing the possibility of doing more of these zoom type meetings and doing like on an issue maybe two meetings would be at different times we had for instance uh, some japanese people said it's four in the morning there's just no way i can get up and do that and so depending on where you are in the world you can request a certain time we and a lot of these committees may end up on a certain issue having two meetings different times so that all the world can participate and if somebody happens to be um, an apprentice member, they're a newer caller and they're not a full member yet, they can't vote on, in the general election yet, it is coming down the pike with all the Board of Governors on board that, and it's not not yet, but it'll go, because it has to go to commit to the general vote, but most likely it's going to be approved, I believe, that apprentice members can now vote on committee business. They, they can't vote in the general election when something has to go to the general board, but a recommendation of the committee, they can vote in that, in a committee they belong. 
Uh, I'd like to add on to that one thing, Mike. Um, if you are not a member of Caller Lab, you don't have to become a member of Caller Lab. There are a lot of exceptional callers that aren't members of Caller Lab. I wanted, I wanted to say that because I want to follow that with, if you're not a member of Caller Lab, Caller Lab is the organization that sets the guidelines, that sets the standardized choreography, that sets the lists that are used internationally around the world as the guidelines. And yeah, they make mistakes as well as we see with the, the various committees. But one of the discussions that was had before, for instance, is the SSD program. The SSD program has a list of movements that go. Is that the final list for the program? I'm going to say no, it is not. The SSD program list will change. And the reason I said that is because the basic list was the list. The basic list has changed. The mainstream list was the list. The mainstream list has changed. As it evolves, probably not for several years until it's in place, but in about five, 10 years, I could easily see the Caller Lab Committee or the SSD Committee saying, you know what? We have a good list here, but we might want to modify. Maybe we don't want wheel around on it, but we do want spin the top on it. And they could collectively get together and change the list, but the only way, or they may keep the same, the only way that is going to happen, or if you have a voice or if you have a preference, like Bob, I know you want to put walk and dodge on the SSD list. I know a lot of callers that want to put spin the top on the SSD list and drop other movements that they don't use in their area. If you want to do that, or you want to have a voice to suggest that, the only way to do it is from within. Join a committee, objectively put your arguments forward, become part of that process. It may not make a change, but at least you know your voice will be heard, and at least you will find out you're not alone in the way you're thinking. I asked Jerry Story why Spin the Top wasn't on the list, because it's such a common, likable call. His answer surprised me, and that was, well, I had to make the list up, and we don't use it that much where I am, so we used what, you know, so we left it off the list. That was a decision made ad hoc opinion based on where it was because he had to come up with an answer and nobody else was doing it. Sometimes that's how lists get made. Walk and dodge, a little more complex. That was off the list to be on the extend for a different reason and there's a whole bunch of things like that. But the thing is, he was there, he was part of that committee, he was part of the development of, well, he was the development of that, but, um, but there was a lot of input into that and this was the decision that they made and all agreed upon. And the only reason they can agree upon that is because they were part of the process. And if you're not going to be part of the process, like me, I don't vote in the Australian elections because I'm not, I can have opinions on it, but I cannot criticize what is there because I was not part of that process. So yeah. That's not a plug for Caller Lab, but it is something if you want to have that voice or you want to be part of that process, do so. And Mike, I am so glad that they're doing that with the other aspects of Caller Lab. That one going to Zoom committee, recognizing that the U.S. is not the only place where Caller Lab exists. Uh, we have in, in our session with Don Beck's sessions, you know, callers from Japan, callers from Germany, callers from Australia. It's one o'clock, two o'clock in the morning. We're expected to join those those meetings. I'm so glad that they're considering looking at it the other way around. And I say that thank you very much to you and, and everybody else that's participated because uh, Guido, I know you've come in at one o'clock in the morning to do a Zoom session. It's 9 a.m. here in Australia and, and vice versa. So without that kind of support, these things couldn't happen. Yes, Jeff. Yeah, no, I'd just like to thank you and uh... Mark, for running this session as often as you have. And um, as interesting as it is, South Australia has regularly five callers attend. I am disappointed with a lot of other callers from our state that have not participated. But I wish everybody the best for Christmas and New Year. Hope it's safe and you're all well, but I must keep moving. But thanks a lot. Thank you. Much appreciated. You're, you're most welcome and thank you, Jeff.
Well, as I said, this this was not intended as a um, program session or a specific thing for any kind of deliberate talk or formal presentation, although we've, we have hit a few things. It's an open forum. If anybody has anything they wanted to look at or any specific modules, uh, Yolanda, you came in an hour and a half early and we looked at some of the stuff you were looking at, which is perfectly fine. Um, I try and open up the rooms, but I don't have anything really more to say unless anybody has something. I do want to extend my best to all of you and all of your families over the holiday season. I hope you have a great Christmas, a wonderful new year, and I hope we're going to see everybody uh, in the new year. I'll come up with a schedule and send out emails to those of you that get emails and put it on Facebook as well. There are a lot of great calling resources out there. There's a lot of caller schools coming up. Um, Behind the Mic Magazine, for those of you that sub, uh, submit to it, has some really, really good articles in it and some of the things we discussed today as well. Um, and there's a lot of other caller resources. And all of these are available on the web. So have a look around. We're going to have about a three or four week break, probably about a four week break of these Zoom sessions until the new year. So take some time off. Everybody should say take some time off over Christmas and the holidays. But if you if you got nothing better to do, poke around some of the old videos. And if there's something you want to see or want us to look at in detail, send me an email and we'll see if we can get the right person for the right job. Well, that that was met with a resounding silence. So I guess everybody is <laughs> nobody has any other topics they want to look at. We've got guys like Chris and Bob and uh, Mike, Mike is here, Guido's here. If you had any aspects of choreography, all of these guys are much better at it than I am, uh, I assure you, and probably much more knowledgeable than I am. Well, not, pro not probably, they are much more knowledgeable than I am. Uh, so ask questions, that's what it's for. Okay, let me put, let, let Come me put on, it Hannah, on. give us some Swedish input. <laughs> I miss you, girl. <laughs> let, let me put it another way. If you don't have anything to do, I'm going to have to get up and do some housework because my wife will make me do something. <laughs> well, let's talk about something. <laughs> oh, that would make my wife happy. <laughs> I, I actually got up and, 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 and cut the lawn yesterday. Oh. You notice there's no lawnmower going in the background <clears throat> of these sessions today. Yes. Well, we had a drought, and I let mine die last year. Okay. And I'm so, getting ready to replace my lawn with a flower garden. <laughs> I don't wait. Talking about all the work, Mel, how's your back doing? Uh, it's it's coming. I Like I said, I had the back surgery in June, and then I, I just had some spinal fast injections done, so the right side is good. I still have restrictions. I probably got about another six months of physio, but uh, I am walking. I am working full time. I can sit and I can do things and I'm starting to get into doing more uh, physiotherapy. I, I've got a new physiotherapist that says push a little harder on some things and cut back on other things, which is good. So I'll be changing it up and uh, we'll see what happens. I will probably never get back to full use of my left leg, but Okay. You know, I, I can walk and I can do all these things. I'm, I'm actually quite happy with the progress I'm making. But thank you for asking. Okay. Cool. Yeah. Well, it's yeah. nice to hear that you're making progress anyway. Yeah. Well. Mel, don't give up. I, I was told I could never ruin my shoulder, and I got it twice. Rotate with operations. So well, they, just keep they, pushing. It'll they work. They told me that I would be three months to maybe four or five months using a walker and then a cane. And uh, I think about three hours after sur after surgery, I was up and walking without a cane and without anything else and walking around the hospital ward because I was bored. And I keep pushing and I keep pushing and I keep pushing. Yeah. I cannot stand not doing I, I have to do something. I have to work. You know, and I've, I've started a new job. We've, we've got a new house. We're building uh, our forever home down here in, uh, well, our forever home is going to be in Victoria, actually, just across the border from where I live in New South Wales. And uh, you know, it's basically a brand new start for the both of us. So life is good. 
Yeah. Just gotta keep working on it. That's all. <laughs> I'm, I'm now wearing a, a brace for my foot because I have a right foot drop. Yeah. So I don't know for how long, but uh, hopefully that'll come back up because of the deep back operation I had. So that's, that's one of the things I'm working on right now is, is foot drop and everything else. So. I can't but wait to dance. I, I may never get it back, but I'm a lot better than I was, and at least I'm not in constant searing pain. So that that's a good thing. And the pain's going. That's what's nice. I, I look I looked back at some of these lessons I, uh, that we were doing and some of the presentations I gave. Them. Yeah, I could actually see that before I had the surgery. I could I, 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 I could see it was I was having a little bit of difficulty there. <laughs> So has anybody got anything they'd like to add in or any topic they want to discuss? If not, I shall let you all get back to your Christmas dinners, your Christmas breakfast, your lunch, your afternoon walk, or your midnight sleepy go bye-bye, depending on where you are in the world. The uh, pre-Toys uh, for Tots uh, preparation uh, session for tonight. <laughs> uh, Chris, did, Chris, did you get my email this week? I did. I didn't get a chance to. Uh, okay, to respond that's fine. To it I just yet. wanted. Yeah, no, wanted I to keep did get it. Okay, yep, good. Yep. Thanks. Thank you. Um, so, Mel, I mean, they're, they're, I don't have anything to say except I just wanted to, uh, like everybody is uh, saying, I, I'm going to say to thank you again for for running all these sessions and all the work. Yes. My pleasure. Like okay, yes. Chris, how just long do you have to wear that patch? Uh, that's uh, uh, that's because. Uh, uh, I can I can hardly see anything out of this eye, and uh, this eye doesn't really see anything uh, but light and dark. But it hurts, so uh, if I keep it covered up, then it's uh, it's a little bit better that way. Oh, okay. It's a comfort thing. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. He, he's theming for his pirate evening next. <laughs> yeah. Yes. It's next ready. September, but he takes yeah. it so seriously, he's preparing well in advance. That's well, what the. It, uh, that's what the the little boy next door thinks I'm a pirate. Of course, well, it doesn't yeah. it doesn't help matters that I confirmed the suspicion. Like, well, are you a pirate? I may be a pirate. I be. Yeah. Well, Chris, watch. You're gonna have to dress right if you want to be a pirate. Now, now, Chris, if they have those little chocolate coins at your place, and you know, start leaving some around. Yeah. <laughs> Well, we're going to do our uh, annual uh, Toys for Tots uh, benefit dance uh, uh, tomorrow afternoon, so that'll that'll be fun. Looking forward to that. Well, I guess that's pretty much it, Mike. Thank you very much for popping in again. Always, always, always welcome, and thank you to everybody for popping in. Hannah and Lars, I know you must you, you two must be exhausted. Current, we are currently in Poland, but. Uh... Oh. We are still here. <laughs> oh, right. I, 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 did, I did have one question for you. I was going to ask it, and I wasn't brave enough to ask it at the time, but I've got to ask it. At one point in this session, Lars started to say something, and you put your hand over his mouth and went like this. <laughs> what was that about? <laughs> well, do I dare to tell? No. You, don't, you don't have to say anything. <laughs> I, can I was just watching, thing. and it was like, it was Lush, like a, a little a little melodrama going on. And I said, "Yep," because Lush I know Lush. Lars. You always get the last word as long as it's yes, dear. <laughs> no, Lars is a very quiet guy normally. He doesn't speak <laughs> a lot. He, he, he seldom discuss things with me. But when he has had a whiskey, that is totally different. Then he begins <laughs> to speak a lot, and that what happened. And I couldn't hear you guys talking because we don't have the the big sound from the computer that we have at home so i had to sorry lars i didn't mean to put you on the spot there <laughs> so but it, whiskey it was, is a bubble it water <laughs> it was just it was just such a, a radical change between because you're usually sitting on the other side hannah yeah and and, and they go <laughs> i couldn't figure out what was going on I think you, you can do with some drama also. We have been so nice all the time. <laughs> and from now on, Hannah's going to have her camera off. <laughs> <laughs> I, am, I am so glad you joined us and, and well, you know, took the time out even your trip to Poland to, to join us today because I know it must be fairly early there for you. Uh, well, it's uh, 
it is right now it's 114. Right now. It's like uh, at Mikey's as well, 115 mm. in the night. That's yes. the same the same time zone? I thought yes, you're one is. hour earlier in Poland. No? Okay. No, no, it's the same. They are an hour earlier in Poland. They just don't set their watches back to confirm it. Yeah, so Guido <laughs> and, and the three of us have the same. <clears throat> Uh, yeah, I too wanted to thank you, Mel. It was really interesting to to be part of your sessions and uh, very giving. I'm yes. more than happy to enjoy them and I hope you get something out of them. <laughs> happy holidays, everybody. See you next year. Yeah. Same you to care. you, John. Goodbye. Bye-bye, bye, John. Bye. Have another whiskey. Have another whiskey for me. <laughs> <laughs> That's Lars. <laughs> to the Uncle Nearest 1884. So, well, ladies and gentlemen, I don't think I think we've pretty much run the gamut of topics, unless anybody has anything to do. So, I think we shall call it a session there. You guys all have a very safe, healthy, and happy Christmas. I hope you all stuff yourselves with turkey and chocolate, not at the same time. <laughs> and uh, inundate with family, friends, comfort, and presence. Be well, everybody. You too. Okay. Goodbye. Bye-bye. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. And a happy new year. Happy new year. Yeah. You too. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. 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 Let's let's zoom after we hang up here. Okay. Bye all. Bye. Bye. You surprised me with your voice. <laughs> Positively. Thank bye you. bye. 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 I'm still waiting for your article, Guido. Yep. <laughs> I'm, I'm getting back at reading it. Uh, after I came back, I had so much to do. I just didn't get my hands around it. And on vacation, Ildrod had so many plans to do. Well, priorities. What she yes. says always comes first. Yeah. I'm glad you guys <laughs> realize it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we, we always have to say that while you're all in earshot. You know that. Yes. Um, yes. All, when all the women are gone, it will be like, oh. Uh, no, it's, oh yes, Ilana, it's okay. It's just the path of the least resistance. <laughs> yeah, I did want to say one thing about your checkers comment at the beginning, Yolanda. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, Bob was saying, oh, checkers found very frustrating. I found very frustrating, but I didn't have checkers when I started. But uh, my first experience with checkers was at a dance. I think it was in Heidelberg, but it might have been in Frankfurt, where I walked in and there was salt and pepper shakers and napkins and sugar packets and everything all over the tables being moved around and at the time there was also a big chess tournament going on and there was salt and pepper shakers and sugar packets and everything all over the tables and you couldn't tell who was playing square dancing and who was playing chess and the chess players were trying to figure out what the heck we were doing and they were trying to figure out what the heck these guys were doing until we all figured it out so it's something that happens all the time. I strongly recommend always carry it. Yes, I, I have them. It. I have them. And I know when I went to my first caller <laughs> school, all the newbie callers decided that if we could turn the darn things into Frisbees, <laughs> none of, I, I none of us like them to begin with. So I always give out a set of checkers at every caller school I do, every caller's workshop I do. I, I give out a set of checkers. They could be you know, the little tags with puppy dogs and kittens of different colors, or they could be designed or that I used to give out the, uh, the callers helpers and somebody's actually remaking these ones again. I don't know if you can see that on your screen, but, uh, oh, yeah. Where is it? yeah, yeah, yeah. Somebody's actually <laughs> remaking these, these ones again. Okay. Um, I was playing with these ones. And I, I try, I try to give them out and I also try to do a session um john have you been to one of my workshops uh, no oh yeah yes i did in adelaide there. yeah, yeah the, uh, those are the ones maybe. yeah so you remember that you got the little i think they were little core flute ones there That's i always right. tried to always tried to have something on the table 
where you actually have to move the checkers through yeah. to a point and, and do that mainly for that reason, because a computer program is not always there. And when you're talking to other callers, Guido, if I said to you, if I put the dancers into an L5 one wave or a, uh, a one half L5, you would probably know what I was talking about. But Yolanda, you would go, what the hell are you talking about? You know, and it, it'd be no different, you know, Mickey, 1P, 2P, you know exactly what I'm talking about. 4, 3, 4P, 1P, you know exactly what I'm talking about. But another caller may not know what I'm talking about. That's one of the beauties of checkers, because you can also say, right, if I do a sides lead right circle to a line line, or a head square through slide through right and left through Dixie style to an ocean wave. Oh, now you know where I am, but you may not be able to visualize that, but you can with your checkers visualize that. I, I think that's the one thing that frustrates me is because I'm a very much a kinesthetic visual learner, like mostly kinesthetic, that, that's my strength. Yeah. And so not being able to use these properly yet, like slowly getting better at it, but is, is tough because I know I'm going to learn more and memorize more using these, right? So it's not having the instructions on how to move them around and having to fiddle with them. And um, it, it's all of our newbie callers have said the same thing. We yep. don't, we want some form of instruction on how to use them. So, uh, so yeah, and, I, and I spent, we I... spent hours together after sessions working oh. on them. And, and if I had a, and I think I do have a camera around somewhere, if I can set it up, I might even be able to do something just on using checkers. Yeah. But I am not the expert on checkers. And I will tell you this, I have only been using them since 1981. And I am constantly <laughs> making mistakes <laughs> with checkers. I have written some absolutely fantastic choreography that works beautifully with my checkers until I go back and check it and realize, oh, I forgot to do a trade on one and, side of the square. And then Mickey walks up something. and says, wait a minute. Your checkers should dance under the influence. But I will tell you one thing, using checkers and moving them around has done more for me to actually, because I don't use the short, I, well, sorry, I shouldn't say I don't use shortcuts. If I'm doing head square through, I'll, I'll, I'll pair off, you know, just put the heads in face your corner. But for a long time, I moved them through everything. And I only started doing the shortcuts on pair off after I moved to Australia. And that was 2006. I've been calling since the early 80s and using checkers the whole time. I would move, I learned more about the body flow, the sequences of what each dancer does in square by using checkers. And I still don't know how to do it. Um, I, I was at an, a late night session with um, Alan Kerr and um, Jaden Frigo and um, Barry Wanson. Oh and we had, we're talking choreography as callers do when you got a bottle of whiskey on the table. And I had to get my checkers out because I had no idea what Alan was talking about because his mind is, you know, he, he's into quantum theory on 26 planes of existence when it comes yeah. to calling yeah. at the same time. Barry follows things very quickly. Jaden, a lot of callers still say, think of Jaden as a new caller because he's only been calling for about five years. The fact he calls right up through challenge and he, he's calling five, six nights a week and, and during the day as well. And he's a full-time caller. Doesn't seem to make any difference. And then there's me, I've been calling longer, but I still got to get my checkers out to follow around. And I had no idea what they were talking about until I brought my checkers out and I had to move them around. And don't feel that it's bad if you're frustrated using them because I'm still frustrated using them. But I've learned a lot more by using them than I did by watching any kind of program. Yeah. Yes, Hannah. Yolanda, mm -hmm. uh, checkers became my friend, my dear friend, when I was once stranded at an airport for 10 hours. <laughs> <laughs> and you know the only thing uh, I had a trouble with when I began using the checkers was what did I do before that I ended up like this so um, somebody told me take a piece of paper and write it down everything that you do that way you can get back step by step if you made a mistake and you don't have to redo all the things 
again. Somebody said have two or three sets out and then just do it step by step. That way, if you make a mistake, I don't know if it was you, Guido, but it, yeah, it um, that that way you, you can, can go. You can make a picture with your phone. You don't. Yes. Have to have your set. I was just that. When... Oh, I think that's Bob. <laughs> Yes, it is. <laughs> and anecdotally speaking, when, when I started using my checkers, I was in the army. I was in the gunner seat of a leopard tank. And you've got an ammunition box next to us, with, which is metal. I put up a sheet, which was a metal sheet, which had terrain on it. And I had little metallic cutouts of blue tanks and red tanks and armored vehicles and things like that. They were my square dance checkers, but I was moving them around because I had no windows to see out. You're spending six hours a day inside of a tank. So I was doing square dance choreography and everybody thought I was doing army tactics, but I was actually just learning square dance choreography, moving checkers around. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I have my checkers always with to... me in that little box. They just fit in there. But my first checkers, I spoiled a deck of cards. I took the boys and uh, the queens, cut them in half. It was... Um, <laughs> the red ones were the heads, the black ones were the sides, and you had everyone, and just worked fine, you know, and, and that's how I started calling and, and getting into the technical type of thing. And with all the computers and what we have today, with all the systems, whatever, um, that is very nice. And I think I have a lot of respect of those who invent those things and put a lot of thinking in there, and others trying to work with it. But on the other hand, did it really get better? Did it really help? Let me give an example. We have um, new techniques on the microphones where they had, you know, the, the latest kick was to have four or five buttons on there to have a stop on the mini disc or even with the computer or to reset or to uh, jump into the next, uh, music spot or whatever, whatever button you were supposed to hit. And I was asked when I had those um, uh, specialized microphones, whatever, uh, with all the resets type thing, whether I wanted it too. And I said, no, I want everything off, everything off. All I want is the volume because the rest I can do on the computer. And then I don't have to keep track. Am I pushing the button? Did I hit it by accident or whatever? I saw a lot of colleagues on stage just taking care and thinking about what they're doing with their hands and losing track of the floor and trying to keep the eye on the dancers and the energy on the dancers. And I think that's the same thing what we're having with, I think we have to come back to make mistakes by watching the dancers, by trying things out, by using, like the, checkers, using the simple things and learning and growing. Because I like the checkers. Never I like more. The yeah, never I like the computer programs more. and the checkers, but I Call agree with you in or, or Sorry, make... additional help in compared to before and in the earlier days. But did we really get better and make it more danceable? What is out? And are we better presenters now today? And I think this is maybe a philosopher. Uh, philosophy we have to think about in, 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 in college schools and in college trainings. I think we have to come back to stumble and fall and get up and do it again to grow. Okay. Yeah. Guys I think I tried I, I think I spoke over you a couple of times there. Mickey you, you you stopped on my screen but I think you were still talking so I do apologize for that. I agree with you. I, I like the checkers. I, I do like the computer programs and I use those to check my work afterwards. Or if I'm just looking at a flow, I might use it to, to actually visualize it. But I prefer the checkers. They're convenient. They're handy. They're there all the time. And I learned a lot more. And yes, Yolanda, I still get frustrated with them. I, 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 I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have to go. I was a guest caller this week, and I did my Christmas song. And then they decided they liked it. So they want me back next week with another one. So I, did, I, finished, oh, it during, I finished it during the session. So I have to to do it with Bob and clarify, make sure everything is okay. No worries. Okay, everybody care. enjoy your holidays and I see you in January. Thank you so much, yeah. Mel. You have no idea how much I appreciate these sessions. Take no care. Worries. Okay, Take care. bye. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 Right, everybody. Uh, I think we've pretty much exhausted everything. <laughs>
Uh, I hope to see you all in the new year and you guys take care and have a great holiday season. Bye all. Same to all of you. Thanks Stay safe and sound. Yeah. Thanks, Mel. Bye -bye. And bye-bye.